All right, again, this just into CNN. CNN uh, is taking action after the White House ban. Our chief White House correspondent, Jim Acosta, that happened on Wednesday after the press conference of the president where Jim was trying to ask questions. His press credentials subsequently taken away by Secret Service. And this morning, CNN is suing the president and a number of other members of the administration. Joining us now is attorney Ted Boutros. He is the counsel for CNN in this lawsuit along with uh, Theodore Olson. Uh, Ted has argued multiple cases before the Supreme Court, federal courts as well. Uh, let me ask you first, uh, just, just to help our viewers understand the grounds for CNN's suit against the government, uh, both under the First and Fifth Amendment. Let's start with the First Amendment, uh, freedom of the press. I explain, explain CNN's argument here. Thank you for having me. CNN's argument is very straightforward, that the First Amendment is meant for the press to be able to act on behalf of the American people and, and the public in getting information. And here, when the White House revoked Mr. Acosta's press pass, it's clear it was based on the content of his reporting, the fact that he was asking uh, tough questions and has been doing that. Uh, the President Trump and the White House has, has repeatedly challenged and attacked CNN and Mr. Acosta. Mm -hmm. And it's really a classic uh, First Amendment viewpoint content-based discrimination against speech. And we can't have the White House or government officials arbitrarily tossing people out of the White House or other government facilities just because they don't like what they're saying or what they're reporting. That's right. what happened here. That violates the First Amendment. And there is some precedent for this. When you look back to 1977, the case of Robert Sherrill, uh, the, the district, uh, the D.C. Court of Appeals ruling uh, in, in his favor, can you walk us through the Fifth Amendment, the due process argument here? Yes, the, the, you're absolutely right. The Robert Sherrill case talked about both the First Amendment and due process. And the, mm -hmm. the D.C. Circuit said, in a case involving uh, the denial of a White House press pass, that uh, before the White House re rejects credentials, it needs to give due process because of the important First Amendment issues at stake. So the court said you, there has to be notice, a uh, written decision explaining why the credentials have been denied or revoked, uh, and an opportunity to be heard. And of course, that didn't happen here. Mr. Acosta was just blocked and his, his pass was taken away when he went to report at work. Mm -hmm. And that's his workplace. When you're the chief White House correspondent for CNN or another news organization, you go to work every day at the White House. So it really but, is damaging and harmful. And to be clear, Ted, CNN sent a letter to the White House on Friday, right, asking for an explanation, asking for the pass back. That super, you know, that, that preceded what we're seeing this morning. Exactly. CNN tried to work this out, uh, re requested that the pass be restored. Uh, Mr. Acosta was denied a day pass in France, even though the French government allowed, would have allowed him to go cover President Trump's appearance at a cemetery. But the White House has basically just been uh, uh, ignoring these requests. Mm -hmm. So we really had no choice but to sue. We, we didn't want to have to go to court. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to just report the news. Mr. Acosta wants to report the news. CNN wants to report the news. So that's what the courts are for. Uh, the First Amendment and the Fifth Amendment uh, arguments, the due process arguments, are very strong. We're asking for emergency relief because every day that this pass has been revoked is a First Amendment violation and it's yeah. irreparable mm -hmm. harm in the words of the law. Uh, Brian Stelter, to be clear, the, the case is intended to be not just about one reporter or even one news organization. Yeah, I think that's a really important piece of this. The Costa happened to be targeted last week, uh, but the president has threatened to revoke other credentials as well. And if we can ask Ted this question, I mean, Ted, what would happen if there's temporary or permanent relief? Would it, impl would it apply to other reporters as well? Would it apply to the entire White House press corps? Yes, that's a great point and a great question because as you said, President Trump said he, this could happen to other reporters and really is the bigger principle here. And so we're advocating a legal principle that there should be a fair process, that there can't be discrimination based on the fact that President Trump or anybody in the White House doesn't like questions. Those principles are important to get, a, to, to get enforced here to protect other reporters, other news organizations across the spectrum, whatever their questions are, whatever their viewpoint is, and again, the public, the American people, because the reporters are there to get information so the public can know what's happening, so they can, the public can make decisions about how to govern themselves. So yep. it really is a much bigger question than right. Jim Acosta or CNN. And I think, Ted, we should remind our viewers this is not about politics, right? This is about constitutional rights. Your co-counsel representing CNN in this case is Ted Olson, who represented uh, President Bush in Bush v. Gore and won that case for President Bush. Exactly. And, and Ted Olson and I both, we, we come from different political uh, viewpoints, actually, even though we've been partners for 30 years. But that's the whole point. Mm -hmm. The First Amendment is, is, is meant to allow 
all viewpoints, so everyone. So this ruling will protect everyone in the press and, again, every citizen, no matter what their political affiliation, so they get as much information as they can get so they can govern themselves. Exactly. This is not a political issue. It's a First Amendment issue that is really important to our, our society. Ted, Ted, help us understand the timeline here because you're applying for temporary restraining right. order. In other words, a judge to make an immediate decision to temporarily give those credentials back. But then you have the larger issue, the court case here. How long could that play out? Is it uncertain? Could it be weeks, months? Uh, it, how long should we expect? Let me walk you through the timeline. So today we're, we're in the filing, going through the paperwork. The, the case will get assigned to a judge. We've asked for an immediate hearing either today if we can do it. We gave the White House notice this morning. Um, mm -hmm. or as soon as possible tomorrow to get a temporary order that would, would immediately restore Mr. Acosta's credentials. Mm -hmm. Then the way the process works, uh, there's a, 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 it has to be within 25 days a hearing on what's called a preliminary injunction, which is another temporary but longer order. And if, at that point, if, if we prevail and the White House is still fighting it, then you go on to a trial on the merits and a hearing on the merits. Mm -hmm. So that can unfold over a period of months um, mm -hmm. or, or even longer, but that's why we need immediate relief because, as you know, every, news is happening every second, every minute yeah. in the White House. You never know what's mm -hmm. going to happen, and every day that a reporter can't be there covering the news, they're injured mm -hmm. and, and the public's deprived of important information.